Welcome to the 187th broadcast of the T-Row Show. This is your host, Keith. Folks, we're going to talk about money today. I'm sure that a lot of people are having trouble with their money. Um, a lot of people are out of money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, what the continental dollar is. It's not the, it was the old continental dollar from the original Congress, um, the Continental Congress. And yes, I know it was inflated uh, heavily back then. And I know people are trying to bring, uh, but those that, you know, that are trying to sabotage things in the country because they hate themselves and hate the country and basically hate everything about everything. And they're going to sabotage what they have to or what they can. Um, I've been trying to do it. Oh, it's worthless. It's this, it's that, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go into the Incoon account. Um, that's a lot of, uh, over the heads of a lot of people. I'm just going to show you the benefits where the diehard constitutionalists and the, um, the American nationals can come together. This is where we, we, we can come to a meeting of the minds. We can all come together. Because I, I talked about this a little bit at the end of, the, of uh, last week's show, the 186th. It's only about 10, 15 minutes. I had to go pretty quick I was because I didn't want the show going too long. And um, lose people, you know, people lose interest when you go too far or too long. So I, I wanted to go into more detail as to what was going on and the legality of what we're doing and uh, the law, you know, how it all uh, comes together and how everybody can, can benefit from this, greatly benefit, because we can restore the restrictions of the Constitution of the United States to the people, the U.S. citizens, actually turn them into citizens of the United States very quickly, just by the use of the continental dollar. It's uh, all based on, on contract. So it'll be a little bit, you know, different because, you know, you'd think, well, we need to bring in gold and silver back and all that. That's never going to happen because nobody's going to give this country gold or silver. Nobody's going to put in your hands this, the, the crime the way it is now with the two uh, uh, phony, uh, uh, phony baloney friggin' uh, uh, political parties and all that. Nobody's going to trust this country or anybody in it with their gold. So that's just not going to happen. Um. Uh, it'd be gone and stolen in five seconds. So anyway, let's get let's get started here, and we'll show you some things that you know, I don't know if you I guess people haven't seen before, or if they have. All right. Um, I was thinking the other day about this, and may the Lord forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think I'm I'm I think I'm pretty close because I don't want to take what was said and turn it into something that it's a that's a deception. So I did a little more research and see if anybody else saw the same thing that I was thinking um, uh, that the money was, the, this is how they, they, took, they took the country. Because they say, we don't care who makes the laws if you control the money. That's close enough as far as that. Now, all three uh, synoptic gospels state that hostile questioners tried to trap Jesus into taking an explicit and dangerous stand on whether Jews should or should not pay taxes to the Roman authorities. The accounts in uh, uh, Matthew 22, 5, 22, Mark 12, 13, 17, say the questioners were Pharisees and Herodians, while Luke 20, 20 uh, says they were spies sent by teachers of the law uh, uh, and the chief priests. They anticipated that Jesus would oppose the tax as their purpose was to hand him over to the power and authority of the governor. It sounds familiar. It sounds about like today, right? Um, the governor was Pilate, and he was a man responsible for collecting the taxes in Roman Judea. Initially, the questioners flattered Jesus by praising his integrity, impartiality, and devotion to truth. Then they asked him whether <clears throat> or not it was right for Jews to pay the taxes demanded by Caesar. In the Gospel of Mark, in addition, pro a provocative question is asked, should we pay or shouldn't we? Jesus first called them hypocrites and then asked one of them to produce a Roman coin that would be suitable for pay, paying Caesar's tax. 
One of them showed him a Roman coin, and he asked them whose head and, and inscription were on it. They answered Caesar's. And he responded, Render therefore unto Caesar the things are which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that, uh, that are God's. The questioners were impressed. States that they marveled, unable to trap him in any further, and being fall, uh, satisfied with the answer, they went away. Okay, so here's the question. Um, whose head and inscription were on it? They answered, Caesar's. So his money was a contract. Contracts are generally private. If not always private, unless you have a public contract, would be a, would be a treaty. Okay, so that's just how I see it. Um, you're welcome to look that up or, or check on it or whatever. So the way I'm seeing this is, is that this is a private contract. By using his money, you, you agree to the terms and conditions of the use of the money. Well, if, if you look at it from that point of view and you start thinking, well, the, the country went downhill when they started using the Federal Reserve note. At first, the Federal Reserve note was, in 1913, was, was a silver certificate, you know, gold certificate and all that. And it just kept going and getting gradually worse. 15 years later, I'm sorry, uh, 17, maybe 17 years later, um, uh, the country went bankrupt. 17, 18, 19, 20 years later, okay, 1933. Everything went bankrupt because they kept changing the terms and conditions of that money and the use of it. So they said, well, this, is, this country is governed by the consent of the governed. So that's how they're getting your consent. You keep using the money. And the more you use it, the more you consent to the contract that goes with it, whether you like it or not. Because it says on their money, legal tender for all debts, public and private. Now, we all know that legal tender is also a coin. Could be a coin. They have lawful money, the lawful money of the United States and all that. Um, so that's a private contract because it has public and private. So privately, that's the contract. So in 1933, they, they brought in communism uh, more into 1947. Your judicial branches were, were turned over to the judiciary, which was a private membership association, uh, which was in the money when you're using the money. People are using their money and say, we don't have jurisdiction. You don't have jurisdiction. I'm challenging jurisdiction. Then the, then the judge says, well, how do you pay your bills? What do you use? Well, I use money. Okay. We have jurisdiction. It's simple. I'm a contract court. See, that's what the judges are telling you. They're a, they're a private contract court with the money that's issued. Because they're going to use that money to sell bonds. Same money. Oh, we only accept cash. They did say that a lot. We don't accept checks or anything like that because uh, we don't, you know, we don't want a record of this, a public record of it. That that's exactly what we're doing. But we're using cash. Okay. <clears throat> Plus, it goes to their fund foundations and crap like that. They don't want anybody to know that. And that that they the company that owns the private jails, they're usually the CEOs or on the board. <laughs> <laughs> the judges are, so they all have a, a stake in the in the jails. It's a scam system. Everybody knows it. Anyway, let's move on. We got uh, so if it's a private contract, uh, the Democrats issued a Declaration of Interdependence in 1976. This is after they went off the gold standard. Okay, so that's when they turned the money into a private contract. <clears throat> or they started more and more going private, let's put it that way, and moving away from public uh, public laws. And uh, the Declaration of Interdependence in 1976 brought in um, communism. That's all it did. It was signed mainly by the Democratic Party. Um, some Republicans were in there, but it was mainly the Democratic Party. And this was also after the Treasury Certificate I showed you guys last week, the one that, People are, are 
trying to promise that everybody's going to get their goals <laughs> at the end of the rainbow. That's funny, by the way, without joining the New World Order. Good one. Sell your soul. Go ahead. All right. So <clears throat> what I want to show you is what the continental dollar is and what it, where it came from and what happened and all that. First, I want to show you that um, sometimes we get, you know, courts to say, well, we, we want USD. We, we don't want continental dollars. Well, they can't do that. Okay. They have to, um, they have to accept it no matter what under their public policy, House Joint Resolution 192. I've gone over that in um, uh, previous shows. Okay, so I want to show you here, this was perfectly legal. And here's the international public notice. This was done in the newspaper. The government of the United States of America hereby reintroduces the general post office, continental dollar stamp, and the continental dollar brought forward to the present time. This was rain of the heavens.com 2697. We did this on December 6th, 13th, and 20th, 2018. Now, this newspaper, the voice of, uh, uh, of South Marion, is a newspaper of publication or public record. In other words, it goes all the way to the New York Times. It's the same network. So if it's in the South Marion, it's as if it was published in the, the existence of it or whatever you publish was in the uh, New York Times. The bankers know about it. Okay, whatever's in this newspaper, they know about it. So what did we do? We introduced the government of the United States of America the general post office, continental dollar stamp, and the continental dollar brought forward to the present time. This is the certified copy. Let me show you. Voice of South Marion, it's an affidavit pub publication. There's a newspaper published in Bellevue, uh, it said Marion County, Florida. And said newspaper has heretofore been continuously published in the said Marion County, Florida, each Thursday, and has been entered in a second class mail matter at the post office in Bellevue, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Here's the public notice right here. Okay. So it's all legal. This is what you get in the newspaper. It was all notarized and all that. So there you go. So guess what? The continental dollar is legal. It's legal money. It's been published. The existence of it's been published. And whoever is a party to the government of the United States of America is also a party to the continental dollar. And here's some other things. Introducing new designs of the continental dollar. We put in the grafted in. Okay, so we figured, well, okay, you can put in the all-seeing eye on the back of your dollar bill, and uh, it's an illuminist, and that's a religion. So I said, well, why don't we just put the opposite on there and put the grafted in symbol. This is just grafted in, it's just a, it was the first symbol of the Jan uh, 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 Church of James. Just after Jesus died, James's brother became a believer and then started his own church in Jerusalem. And we, it was, it was interesting. Um, he had his own, uh, uh, deal there and the Roman soldiers kept trying to kill them all. It was really messed up what they were doing. They were bashing them after that. But, uh, <clears throat> this was the symbol that was, that was put in there. And then somebody comes in and tries to call this a, a devil symbol and all. So it's like, people just shut up. Okay. If you can't say anything nice, just don't say anything at all. All right. If you got to constantly cut things down is what they've got to do. This is the symbol that was on James church. This has nothing to do with the devil. All right. It's just the grafted in symbol. And it's, it's perfectly fine for the Gentiles. It's a symbol. So quit trying to turn it into some demon stuff. 
Uh, okay. All that is is just crap that people put out so that you'll uh, go against um, uh, whatever. They're trying to just manipulate you and all the crap that they do. Just leave it alone, man. It's just money is all it is. It's a national currency. This is the original seal of the country. This is the, um, uh, the seal, the bank seal, actually, of a treasury seal of North America right there. We reclaimed that because it was came to, into existence in 1781. It had all the assets in it and all that. And this is legal tender right here for debts, public and private. That's where it is right there. I'll see if I can get that a little bit bigger so people can see it. And these were just different designs that we put in there. We just put the grafted in symbol in the back, put Yahweh's name in it. That was Yahushua in the bottom. Um, the same thing, just put that symbol back there and that's all we did. And let me see, yeah, there it is. Uh, legal tender for debts, public and private. It's a series labor back, 6020. Okay, so this is our labor back uh, series. Now, we're getting into the coins also, just letting everyone know. Um, we're, 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 we're getting into coins also. We're going to be selling those soon so that people can uh, at least trade in the money that they're going to be that's going to be going into hyperinflation to get you guys to go into a digital currency. Well, guess what, folks? A coin is the only thing I've ever used in my entire life that I didn't need a social security number for. And I didn't need an ID. Is that cool or what? That's freedom. So I was going to, we're, we're putting a coin together. Don't worry. It's, it's almost there. Um, uh, should be within the next 30 days. We'll have a coin available. Hopefully. It just depends on how fast the guy uh, operates and moves to get the stamp. <clears throat> um, so it's the only, like I said, the only form of currency that I did not need a social security number and an ID to use. I actually just handed them the coin. Here, this is how much, you know, this is what it is. Okay. So that shows you right there that the there's the new um, uh, designs. Okay. This was the publication link and receipt and verification. That's this right here, publication link, receipt, verification. Everybody can see it. It's the government of the United States of America reintroduces the General Post Office Continental Dollar stamp in the Continental Dollar, December 7th, 2018. So it's all legal. Everything's good to go. Everybody knows about it. It's in publication. So there's no counterfeiting. There's no anything like that. And we have published that we have uh, a claim to the government of the United States of America and the United States of America. We have worked all that out. Um, as and we've proven that uh, someone tried to steal it, but we used that theft to prove that we had absolute claim to it, and um, and we're sharing it with people that want to be a part of the country. Okay. Now we got a national extend. Okay, this is when we did the uh, in 2016. This is when we extended the original continental dollar for legal tender for debts, public and private capabilities to the continental dollar. Okay. And that's all those links and there's a lot of stuff there. And this was the newest version from way back when. Okay. Now we have, see, we, we took, we took this guy off. This was the president, uh, the first president of the United States of America. We took his, his face off of there and we put in the, the grafted in seal on the $1. That's the difference. Um, and we had the great seal here. We put the grafted in symbol there. We just took this out and put the grafted in symbol in. That's what we were doing. And we have a $500 bill. This is, um, uh, I think it's George Washington Carver. And then we had the $1,000 bill. 
and these guys were this is George Washington Carver, he, he was uh, born a slave and he taught himself that education is the key to unlock the golden door of freedom. And that's what that means. He was born a slave, but he became smarter than the slave masters, which won his, which won his freedom. So that's how you stay out of slavery. Stay out of ignorance. It's simple. The more you learn, the more you know, the less you can be enslaved. This is a man here, this is Vivian T. Thomas, uh, sorry, $1,000 bill. Uh, he started, um, originally uh, started the, uh, or created the open heart surgery, which a lot of people didn't know. Okay, so <clears throat> this is our open heart surgery guy. Pretty cool. Now, this is where we're, we can have the meeting of the minds. The meeting of the minds are, we've got a bunch of people that just really, I mean, they're absolutely just in love with the company flag that's been around since Egypt, okay? And um, uh, and the Constitution. They just love the Constitution. They don't, they over, it, it's like such a blind love because they just don't see the flaws in it, but that's okay, whatever. They just want those restrictions. They have the Bill of Rights. Those are their rights. They just believe that, hey, I've got a right to, Face my accuser and the right to assembly and all this other kind of stuff. So, okay, no problem. We can do that. The problem is, is that your money is not recognized by that constitution. And your constitution is not recognized by that, by your money. You get it? There's your flaw. Now, if you use a silver certificate or something of that nature, then the, that constitution will re, re, would recognize that currency, and that currency would recognize that constitution. They don't come together. So I don't see the Federal Reserve getting out of there here anytime soon, regardless if Trump has control of it or not. I don't see it leaving. And I don't see the Constitution money coming back around either. They say, oh, he's going to come out with silver this or gold this. I guarantee, folks, it's not, gonna, it's not going to do what you want it to do. It's, I, I just I don't see it happening, okay, because they don't connect the dots. They never have. Okay, so what I'm going to say is this. Here's the terms and conditions of the continental dollar. Let me get this done here real quick. I read this last week, but I'm going to go a little bit slower this time so that we can get it real clear as to what we're talking about, what's going on, and all that. Now, when you use the Continental Dollar, there's a couple of ways you can use it. You can open up an account, which is here at the ContinentalPublicBank.com. Yes, U.S. citizens can open up that account. And no, SSNs are not required. There's a couple of ways of getting it, okay? You can, you can work for somebody else, have them sign a voucher. They don't have to pay you anything. Have them sign a voucher. We'll go ahead and, and uh, fill up your account with that amount. This, this bank right here is can transfer money from one account holder to the other. So you can pay people with it. So it has a combination of a, of a, of a, like a PayPal type thing in the bank itself. So all you need is their username and you can transfer money to them. It's real simple. Um, and it's done every day. People are literally saving this money up. They're waiting for the crash. And they really get upset. I mean, really get upset, uh, even though it doesn't really have a, a, a market for, per se. Okay. Um, they really get upset when their account gets, you know, messed up a little bit, if it does. Because we've had a couple of crashes on it, but we've, we've restored them and we've gotten them back up and we got the, the, uh, 
the totals done and we got it working again. So, <clears throat> but now we have our own server, so that's a little bit different now than we did before. Okay, now here's the continental dollar. It says by using the continental dollar, we have it in cash. You can you can get the cash. You just transfer the cash to the treasurer, and he sends the cash to you in the mail. Uh, I think it's as a fee for it, but um, for doing that. But uh, we can get the cash to you in the mail. And uh, like I said, we'll be using a coin here pretty pretty soon, fairly quickly. We know times are getting tough. We know people are having issues, but we have the bank for right now, so you can use that the digital one. We have the paper version, and then we have the coin, okay? And we're going to do this not to control your life. We're going to do this to make your life better because it's going to make our lives better too. The more people that use the continental dollar, the better everybody's life becomes. The reason why I say that is because we're all used to a medium of exchange. We were raised in that. So it's, it's kind of hard for everybody to just switch right now. now People ask questions. Well, what about all the money I've saved? Well, you can transfer it into continental dollars. No problem. Uh, what about my pension? Okay, no problem. We can do that. What about my retirement, my Social Security? We can do that. We also do this uh, with the, the taxes you pay. If you vouch the taxes, in other words, whatever taxes you pay this year in income taxes, we'll reimburse you. We'll give that money to it right back to you. <laughs> We're going to give it to you. We've done that. It's in the newspaper. We put it in the publishing the newspaper. We told everybody we would do it, and we will do it. They said, well, where can I spend it? Well, some people have gotten it. We've got a UCD token on the XRP, uh, the World Exchange. So what they've done is it's actually kind of cool. They've transferred what their balance to the World Exchange in the UCD coin or token. And then they went and bought U, uh, XRP with UCD and then cashed that out to, for USD. That's been done. That's the only way to get it to USD right now. Otherwise, you're using the continental dollar. You're in a different jurisdiction. So remember, Caesar's jurisdiction. That's Caesar's contract. That's Caesar's jurisdiction. That's his coin. Goes all the way back to that. So Jesus kicked the crap out of Roman, the Roman Empire and kept, kicked the crap out of the Federal Reserve just with one line. He knew how to destroy them. The continental dollar is subject to the following terms and conditions. I didn't say you were subject to the following terms and conditions. I said the continental dollar was subject to these conditions, okay? The continental dollar agrees to be bound by these terms and conditions and agrees to the, uh, that the user of the continental dollar is obligated and responsible for the agreement. So you know the continental dollar is subject to these, this agreement, so you have to uphold that out of respect for the continental dollar. If the user of the continental dollar with any of these terms the user, uh, I'm sorry, uh, disagrees with any of these terms. The user is prohibited from accessing this site and trading and using uh, uh, and trading using the continental dollar. All materials contained on this website are, are protected by copyright and trademark. And you see why we have to do that because we get people that like to steal from us. And this is when I, uh, people used to steal from me personally all the time, back from 2006 to 2010 constantly stealing my work, everything I did. So I just started copywriting it. When I did that, everybody stopped. Except for one particular person. Everybody knows about that. Um, <clears throat> so that any of the terms and conditions cannot be usurped by any foreign person that is not a party to the agreement. So you know who we were talking about there. All right. This was under the Disaster Relief Act that we did. So keep in mind, this was the process we put together when it dealt with mortgages. The United States and Congress assembled hereby omits the following paragraph from the Declaration of Value as amended published by the Office of the Treasury for the Government of the United States of America, 827-2016. 
It is declared that the national currency term and the current con I'm just going to, uh, that's just, that's just things they had to do. You, you're welcome to read that. It's under the terms and conditions at continentalpublicbank.com. I'll move on. The Office of the Treasury for the Government of the United States of America and all other offices under it shall have regulatory authority over the, the legal tender for debts, public and private, disaster relief program occurring throughout the world and within the United States of America. That was on purpose. Okay. The United States of America was under that U.S. Constitution. See, we put that, that term right there. It's a little bit different from this country right here. All right. Now, any and all promissory notes wherein the maker is also classified as the borrower shall be declared trustee of the borrower's promissory note signed within the United States of America. Okay, so everybody signs a promissory note to pay for a mortgage. There's a little trustee section down there nobody signs. You're supposed to sign that. <laughs> you become the trustee of the note when you do that. You know what happens uh, when you don't? When they go to foreclose, because you're not going to pay the, the full mortgage. Um, it, people rarely do. <clears throat> um, when they go to do that, the, the tr uh, somebody else in the county, they'll sign the, as trustee. You leave that open. So. And they do that all the time. <clears throat> now, the trustee of the promissory note shall have the authority to sign a new promissory note under this act for full discharge of all interest obligations attached to the note and mortgage agreement within the United States of America. That was lowercase t. So. That's under the Constitution of the United States of America. Part 4 shall relieve the United States of America all li of liability for the creation of homelessness, which is a recognized human rights violation. Yes, it is a recognized human rights violation to make somebody homeless. You can't do that, folks. The trustee of the new promissory note signed within the United States of America and the States of the Union shall enjoy the benefit of a full discharge of the promissory note under this act with a $1 silver certificate printed within the United States of America or $1 continental dollar, lawful money, full title of equal value of the $1 silver certificate. Okay, one, once discharged, the Continental Public Bank shall declare the balance of accounts settled, wherein the former borrower shall be known as a Lodia title holder and or Sterling silver, silver title holder. The title holder shall have two certified copies to prove a Lodia or silver or Sterling silver status. Okay, so what we mean by this is under this act with a $1 silver certificate, printed within the United States of America, remember, the, that money is recognized by that constitution of the United States of America. And we've seen this happen before. One guy that we know, and we had the, we had the process and how he did it, because we wrote it out here, um, discharged $28,000 in, in debt, uh, school loans and stuff like that, with a $1 silver certificate. Okay, the Treasury called him and said, congratulations, you just uh, uh, paid off your debt because the money that you used is recognized by the Constitution of the United States of America. And that's how we did it. And we came in and used this process to do it. We're helping you out. All right, the trustee, all right, let me go back in here. Once discharged, Connell, da, 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 all right. A certified copy of the promissory note has been declared by the Continental Public Bank to reflect the status of the fully paid or and or fully discharged. Okay, and the reason why that is, see, what's supposed to happen is, is that in order to get a Lodia title, that comes in with the bank, your money, your contract. Okay, so you you can have a deed, and you don't you don't have a Lodia title or a Lodia title. Just by saying, "Oh, this is a Lodia title," <laughs> a Lodia title is is um, is achieved by having two separate documents: your deed and then your uh, your declaration from a bank that uh, all obligations are discharged or paid. And that's it. Now, a deed recorded within the United States of America and the States of the Union within the Office of Deeds and Recordings. Okay. 
All American nationals shall have the privilege of being paid in continental dollars operating under the Legal Tender for Debts Public and Private Act of 2016. That's an act that, that we did. Without recourse of violating any other part of the Articles of Confederation as amended August 5th, 2015. The privilege shall be revoked if the statute 48, page, pages 112 and 113 approved, June 5th, 1933, 4.40 p.m. Attached thereto. Uh, this act as evidence of the disaster and are resolved within the United States of America and the U.S. military comes back into honor by obeying Executive Order 11110, Amendment of Executive Order 10289, issued by its Commander-in-Chief on June 4th, 1963, and you're welcome to look that up. Okay, other terms. The use of the continental dollar restricts all public institutions under certain conditions and are subject to the following restrictions, but not limited to based on the fact that no state can make any laws to impair the obligation of a contract. The public institutions are hereby restricted by the following terms of the if the user damages any public property of the claimant. Now, what we're saying is, is that you guys wanted your First Amendment back. Well, this is how you get it done. It's done by the money that you use. I know one guy that used to hang around politicians a lot. And he noticed none of them ever used and never carried any Federal Reserve notes. The senators never have any money in their pocket, any Federal Reserve notes in their pocket. They always ask everybody else, hey, you got a dollar? I got to get something out of the, uh, the Coke machine here. None of them ever had any money in their pocket. That's the reason why. No cash. Okay. Now, when the user is exercising the right of freedom of the press, freedom to petition for redress of grievance through the great jury, the freedom of assembly assembled with peers, freedom to practice religion that is not assembled as a military theology as the enemy of capitalism. When you use that, the user is exercising the following conditions in the use of the money. The user of the continental dollars with the right to bear arms and freely own private property. Uh oh, that's capitalism. Woo -hoo. The user, that's also deals with what? Second Amendment, bear arms. And you're able to you own, freely own private property. That's because guns are private property. Think about it. They're trying to take away your right to own private property by confiscating the guns. Communism. The user of the continental dollars with the right of free compulsory uh, to be free of compulsory military service in the service of the tripartite of the city of Washington, Vatican City, and the city of London, here and after tripartite, and is further free from aiding and abetting its soldiers by forced quartering. Go read the third one, you'll see it. You'll see the similarities. The user of the continental dollars with the right to be free of any searches and seizures and arbitrary arrest by one of its employees. Soldiers are otherwise unless found trespassing upon the tripartite. So one of its employees would be federal employees, blah, blah, blah. The user of the continental dollar is with the right of international due process, either accepting or prosecuting with the practice of the international due process. The user of the continental dollar is with the right of a fair trial in all matters, civil or criminal, cases and within a court of law or equity. Hmm. The user of the continental dollar is with the right of equal a right of equity in all civil cases. You don't have that right now. You have administrative courts that combined law and equity. So it's up to the judge to say, oh, today we're going to be dealing in equity. Think about that. All right. The user of the continental dollars with the right of non-excessive bail, non-excessive fines, and immune from cruel and unusual punishment. The user of the continental dollars with the right of social compact and without a, a social compact is with the right of a proprietor. The user of the continental dollars with the right of a federal republic or as written and defined within the law of nations. All right. Now, the continental dollar is a subject of the new covenant, law of nations. The Articles of Confederation is amended August 5th, 2015 and is counted and balanced by the Office of the Secretary, or I'm sorry, the Treasury for the Government of the United States of America wherein is delegated in various offices and body politics or public banks. Okay. 
Now, this is not a private bank. It's a public bank. Continental, dollar, Continental Public Bank is a, is a public bank. This is what the Continental Dollar cannot do. The Continental Dollar or its user cannot be regulated or subjected by the United Nations nor become a subject of the United Nations. This is the contract, folks. They can't violate contracts. You get it? Well, who's going to enforce this? It's a contract. In any court of law anywhere in the world, if you walk in there and you have a private contract, the private contract is the law. It always has been and always will be. No matter if they're, they're uh, communist, socialist, don't give a damn who they are. The contract's contract. It's recognized in any kind of court. All right, so just realize that. <clears throat> The Continental Dollar or its user cannot be regulated or subjected by any Federal Reserve Bank nor any court of the Federal, of Federal Reserve. That's what you have there. You have a court of the Federal Reserve. It's a private bank. You go into a jail, it's a private bank. It's the Federal Reserve Bank because you're using their money in that jail. I had one lady come in and I was, uh, 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 she says, all we accept is USD. Okay, I know because you're a Federal Reserve. Uh, system. The House Joint Resolution 192 says you have to accept any kind of money because guess what? You're bankrupt. And since you're bankrupt, you really don't have the right, Miss U.S. Citizen, to demand any certain currency. You have zero right to do it. It's by their, your own resolutions. House Joint Resolution 192. All right. Um, now, the continental dollar or its user cannot be regulated or subjected by any international bar association, see Rothschilds, nor the American Bar Association, see Rothschilds, or other bar association, nor any of its members or its creators. See Rothschilds. The continental dollar cannot be regulated or subjected by any implied warranties or suffer any liability for incidental or uh, intentional damages suffered by anyone. The Continental Dollar or its user cannot be uh, regulated or subjected to any forced vaccination, executive orders, implants of electronic chips, totalitarian party or practice of any form of totalitarianism, communism, fascism, socialism, any religion or political structure under the military theology, that'd be Islam, any Me Too theology, Karenism, <laughs> someone guy saw that, he thought it was funny, religion, face mask. We coined the phrase Karenism. Uh, power of attorney, proletariat, class, slavery, or aristocratic republic controls. Aristocratic republic is what you have with the Constitution of the United States. That's what it is. All the powers in the hand, hands of the Senate. We've covered that. It is, in the law, it is in the law of nations. So there you go. Now, the Continental Public Bank may, uh, may revise these terms and conditions of use of the continental dollars, uh, so revised by the Committee of the National Assembly for the Government of the United States of America, for its website and the use of the continental dollar at any time without prior notice, by using this website as an account holder, carrying any continental dollar coin or any of the paper version of the continental dollar, the user of the continental dollar is ag are agreeing to, the users are agreeing to, ag uh, to be bound by the current version of the of these terms and conditions of use. Now, obviously, the the members of the um, committee of the National Assembly, which are general postmasters, are not going to be screwing you over with terms and conditions, because they enjoy the same terms and conditions and immunities. The most that's going to happen is they're going to make it even better and tighter than what it is now. Okay. That's a private contract, folks. Now, if somebody says, oh, well, I'm going to arrest you for this, this, and this, and statute so-and-so, basically, uh, you don't have any jurisdiction. Oh, you're a sovereign citizen, Mr. Terrorist? You know how the cops are, right? No, I just don't use Federal Reserve notes. It's my continental dollar. And here's the contract. Read the contract. You have a good day. It's simple. Now, what does this do? It restores that Constitution. It's the workings of the Constitution of the United States, where 
we have a meeting of the minds. Obviously, we're in a different, uh, the, we're in the United States of America. We're a little foreign from the United States. And it, it, um, we, want, we have a meeting of the minds. We're able to put it together. We're able to come together. Okay? And you get rid of your major problem that you have, which is your freaking Federal Reserve and the private bankers. They're screwing you over daily. And took away your constitutions and all that. If you use the continental dollar, guess what? This restores your state constitutions and all your, your original charters in common law just by the, con the contract. It's already all been established, legally done. Um, we want you to be rich. We want you to have money because the richer the people are, the stronger the country, the more security we all have within our, our capitalist societies. And that's what we're trying to achieve. That's what everybody wants. So what we need to do is realize that we're not enemies. We're trying to come together. There's been no reason to attack me. There's been no reason to attack the government of the United States of America, the States of the Union, or anything. We want the same thing as everybody else does. Everybody wants the same thing. They want to be able to sit back when they get home, play with the dogs, pay attention to the children, say hello to the wife, and everybody's just calm and enjoying each other and your company. The fact that they live together and they're spending their lives with each other without having to worry about how am I going to pay that water bill? How am I going to pay that electric bill? Man, we got some problems coming up. Those tires are looking awful bald. Damn car needs needs a, a oil change again. I know it's got over two hundred thousand miles on it. We need a new one. Man, my clothes are looking raggedy. I really wish we had a better house. I wish we could afford to fix this one up. Which we have a voucher system that can make that happen. We can have economic recovery within four years. Be the most powerful country in the world economically within four years. It's already been proven and it can happen again. Folks, it's there. There's no excuse as to why people are not using it. Anybody that comes against it with some negative crap is just either extremely ignorant and stupid and doesn't know anything about economics that this is the best opportunity that everyone is going to have in their whole entire life. It gives opportunity to the poorest of people to get out of that, that, uh, that uh, squalor and turn, and turn their lives around. Every single person in this country with this system, with the continental dollar, with the voucher system, has the ability to turn their life around and come out and become very successful. Everyone, it doesn't matter who you are. All right, so that's it. Take it or leave it. Because that's the best chance you're gonna ever get. And this is not gonna be offered by the United States. Those bankers are never gonna offer this to you because it, they can't keep you down, can't keep you under control. All right, and that's what they freak out about. So please don't approach this as I, uh, that, that somebody owes you something. Just approach it as, hey, whatever I can do to help, you know how you can do to, when you, what you can do to help? Because people ask me that a lot. Use the continental dollar. If you have products or your services, I don't care what you do. Take 80 USD, 80% and 20 continentals. And just keep doing that as much as you can to get continentals out there. And people are more and more educated about what's going on. It's the best deal you're ever going to get in your entire life, folks. <clears throat> it's time to make the change. It's time for the, uh, 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 
the um, energy companies to start accepting continental dollars, water companies, those basics, just the basics that people need. Is quit sitting there begging Democrats and Republicans to give you guys money. That's ridiculous. Oh, we're going to make more legislation. Here we go with the laws, more laws to fix the problems that we caused 10 years ago. So isn't that funny how they screw up and they put another restriction on you to fix it <laughs> and it keeps going on to where you can't even move anymore. <clears throat> but you know, that's a lawyer's, uh, a lawyer's uh, pill. That's his, that's his medicine. That's his industry. The industry is law and the law will always fix everything, right? Oh, just put another law in there. It'll fix it. Well, we got to fix it with more laws because that's the pill that you take. That's the practicing of medicine. That's why they call it practicing, practicing law. That, oh, we, we just need a new law. That's it. You know, that, that fixes everything. <laughs> Don't worry about enforcing the laws you already have. Let's get a new one. That one will be enforced. So you get the idea. So at any rate, there it is. It's right there in front of you. You're free to open up an account. It's not going to kill you. Nobody bites. Um, no reason to attack it. And, um, you know, quit respecting people that keep ripping you off. Like Federal Reserve, you know. It, it, it just diminishes your whole appearance. Thanks for listening to the 187th broadcast of the T-Row Show. We'll see you next week.